and welcome back to another vlog. I just wanted to do a little quick vlog because I've got three vlogs coming up for you. So today's one is going to be all about your inductions, getting your uniforms as a newly qualified nurse and your first job. And then tomorrow's vlog on Sunday, I'm going to be uploading just my journey this first week, what's been going on, what sort of patients I've been seeing, what's been happening, just an update really. And then my third vlog, which I shall upload either Wednesday or Thursday, and that one is going to be all about how to survive as a newly qualified nurse, first days, weeks, whatever. Just some little tips and advice um, for other people out there that might want that. So yes, I thought I'd separate all of the vlogs just to make it easier to locate and you can pick and choose what you want to watch instead of watching one long, boring vlog, if that makes sense. So yeah, here we go. So when you get offered your job, you'll get your contract through, maybe in the post or email, different trusts disclaimer, different trusts, different places, different areas, all have their own ways of doing things. So you might get it through the post, you might get it on an email. I had mine on an email. And yeah, it, it'll give you all the breakdown of your hours, your pay and your leave entitlement, NHS pensions, all of that sort of stuff, all the nitty gritty that you really need to know. Then your first days, whichever area you're in, should be all about induction and orientation. Again, different areas do this. So I'm in GP, so it's a very different kind of set up to the ward so when I got my first job on the ward it was all about it was a, a block week and it's sit down in a lecture theatre listening to health and safety safeguarding information governance have your manual handling all your skill sessions your basic life support all those sort of little things but for GP it was a little slightly different for me so my induction was obviously going through policies and procedures setting up all of my internet stuff, so my emails access, setting up my EMIS system, which is the computer based system that they use where I'm at to document patient notes because everything is computer based. There's no paper notes. So it's, it's very much like that. And then I setting up my e-learning as well so I can sit and do some e-learning, have a look at PGDs, all sort of things like that being shown around the building, the fire exits and things, and then getting things like competencies signed off. So I had to get my bloods signed off so that I could start seeing patients to do their bloods. Because as you know, GP is a little bit different. It is a more loan working. You're not in a ward environment with a lot of people around you. It is your room. You have your own patients one by one. So it is a slightly different. So you might find that if you're going into GP, it's very autonomous. So yeah. So GPs also have their own funding as well. So the way they set things up, like inductions, orientation, it might vary from place to place to what they do. And that's all pure down to it's their their work, it is their company, it is their funding and their money, and they can do as they wish. But obviously they've got to stick to lines and things like that. So you are still supported and protected, if that makes sense. You're not just sort of thrown and left. Also, you will have to send up things like your bank details to get paid. So you will see usually like a payroll person to do your admin bits with banking and pay dates. I also have to see a lady about my uniform. She hasn't been in, so I haven't been able to get my uniform. So I've just been wearing black trousers and a shirt, just as long as I look smart and presentable at the practice. So that's what I've been doing this week. And I should get my uniforms next week, which I can't wait. That's another vlog. <laughs> However, if you're going to work on the acute sector or maybe a different area, they might do this before you start. So they might get you in to size you for your uniforms. I know I did as a HCA when I was based at University Hospitals Birmingham. They sort of, they, you go to the uniforms department, they've got a special department and they might just get you in to size you up for your uniform and then they have to order it in for you. But just to warn you, you might get that that process that I've had where um, I've started and I haven't got a uniform yet and I'm waiting for it to be ordered. So yeah, but next week guys, next week. You will also do admin things like setting up your NHS smart card. I don't know if everywhere has this, but I know on the wards people have had it. And I know in GP, you have your very own smart card, which gives you access to um, NHS systems, that sort of thing. I'm not 100% sure on all of the smart card things. Um, I've never had one, so I can't really say much about it, but you get issued it, it is yours. And it's it's yeah it's it's just what you sort of log in and out of the computer systems for so it registers to your name so anything that happens on the computer it can be back traced to you also in your induction week you will get your photo id we need ids as nurses so they'll take your photo 
So then once you have done all of your induction bits, your orientation, fire safety, all the boring stuff, so once you've done that, then you will start seeing patients. So like me in GP, I've been buddied up with someone. So I've got like a mentor type sort of person that's looking after me, show me where everything is. And I've been sitting in them clinics to see how they run things. And that was very much my first couple of days there was like that two and a half days maybe was sitting and but there is only so much sitting around you can do if you're like me I don't like to sit around I like to get stuck in I want to see my own patients I want to do more because that's the way I learn I'm better just being thrown and just yeah getting on with things and it was all just they ease you in well I felt like I've been really eased in so sitting with someone I've been then I've been doing a little bit more like helping the person doing dressings and things things that I could do I've helped while they did the computer stuff and then I sort of took on my own patients, but again, they were easier sort of patients. They weren't complex. It was blood testing, which I can do. I've been signed off for wound dressings, which I can do. It's quite simple. However, if it turned complex, then I know exactly where to signpost and refer to if that's the case. And then it will just build. The more I sort of learn, the more courses I sort of do, the more things I'm trained and shown to do, then I will pick up those patients. Like vaccines, for example, I have to do a set of PGDs so that I can give these vaccines. And um, I need to do the... I can't do baby immunisations. That's something we do in GP until I've done the course. And my course starts in May. So I have to wait till May to do my smear tests, my, my baby immunisations, children, vaccines, things like that. And once I've done all of those things, I will start then taking on those patients. So it's, it's going to be a steady uphill if that makes sense to me it, it feels amazing however again in the ward sector in the acute sector you might be completely different it might feel i mean you've been a student nurse you know what it's like on the wards already you've been there you've done it so it might be slightly more like here you go deal with it sort of a feeling that's just my guess i'm not sure 100 percent. i can only go by what i've done as a student nurse on the wards However, you shouldn't be just left on your first day because that's not right. You should have a mentor. You still have that support between the other nurses and you should have most places now do a preceptorship, which is any time between six and 12 months. And that is where you've got your competencies, exactly like being a student. You will have your book to work through to sign off your competencies to show that you are going to be this nurse. You can do these things and that you've covered all of the skills needed in that particular area. So every area will have their own separate book, their own competencies and their own skills that you have to get signed off along the way. And you should have that. If you feel unsupported, if you feel like you are thrown in and you don't know what you're doing, you have to raise it. You have to say something to your management, to the sister in charge. Please raise it, OK, because it's not OK. And this is why people are leaving the profession straight away, I think, because they are thrown in and that's not OK. And if that's happening, change needs to happen. But for change to happen so it doesn't happen again, you have to be that person to be brave and just say, do you know what? I'm really sorry. I need the support. I can't do this. And hopefully they're going to listen and support you. And if they don't, don't be afraid to raise it higher. If someone's not listening to you, if you've gone to the manager of that ward, the matron, whatever, they're not supporting you. You feel like you need more and they're not listening. Go higher. Absolutely. Like there's no harm in doing that. And you shouldn't be worried about backlashes or anything like that because that shouldn't be happening. And this sort of culture needs to change on the wards. So please raise it. Please do something about it. Don't just abandon ship and leave because if everybody does that, nothing's going to change. So please, I beg you, be brave stand up for yourself and change it make change happen and make it an amazing place to work for other people as well not just yourself so yeah that's sorry that's my little vent over so just to change back to GP where I'm at, you should still have a perceptuousit period. So I've still got my person that I will go to. I've got all the competencies that I need to sign off, which I'm doing at the minute. And then I've got the course. So for GP, if you don't know, you have to do the primary care fundamentals course um, or fundamentals of primary care course. But if you have a Google, it'll come up and you can sort of research. And it is just um, an eight month or nine month course, just a day a week or a day here and there, every other week maybe. But So you're still working, but you go to uni maybe for the day to get this course done. And that's just to get all of the skills, like I said, like the baby immunizations, travel vaccines, smear testing, all of that, the things that you 
don't do at uni you have to sort of learn and do so yeah and then once you've been signed off that then you can start seeing these patients I just wanted to just quickly talk about pay as well. So in the acute hospital sector, that is very much band five, six, seven, eight, and that's your pay scale. So it will start off as 24,214, I think. Don't quote me on that. I think that's the start and salary. And then as you progress, um, as you get your increment increments, it's sort of the, the pay goes up for you. In GP, it is very different. It's a very different pay scale. So this very much depends on the area you're working at. Some of them work to the um, agenda for change, like the hospitals do, which is where it's the band five, six, and that's that pay rate. However, However, GPs are, even though they're class, even though they are funded by the NHS, they are classed as a sort of private sector because they have control of their own funding, their own pot of money to do whatever they want with, with their staff. They can pay their staff whatever they want. They're in control of that and it's up to the GP because that's sort of their business and their role. But yeah, I just wanted to cover that if you go into GP, it's a completely different field to when you're working on the wards, completely different pay scale, completely different way that they do the increments and things like that. But overall, in my experience, it's been really positive and amazing so far. I am loving life. And yeah, I'm just really grateful. So I think I've covered everything. I've done the uniforms, I've done your inductions, your first week settling in. I don't know really what else to sort of say in this vlog. So I'm going to end it here and I hope that it's been helpful. If I haven't covered anything you want to know, comment below and I will absolutely answer it as best as I can. If I don't know, I will try and find out for you or signpost you or you can Google it and have a look, check the Facebook group, see what their experiences are, all of that jazz. You're sensible, you know. So yeah. I am going to end this vlog here and thank you so much as always for tuning in and I shall see you tomorrow for my update of what an amazing first week I've had as a newly qualified nurse working in GP. Bye.